G'day, I'm Mitch, welcome to Large Group Hobbies, and we're back with some more Rhino fun this time. Uh, and we're painting them for a change, you know, it's been a while since there's been a kind of an in-depth painting video, so here we are. If you haven't seen the last one where I build the rhinos, I will put a link that will appear somewhere above my head at this point. So let's get into it, this is really fun. Through the magic of, uh, of, of video editing, a lot of this stuff was actually painted through kind of Australian winter here, so while it's about to be 35 degrees outside today, I'm uh, painting this in a time period where it was closer to kind of one, that's Celsius for anyone that's in the US. Um, so we we'll open up with a really simple black undercoat, um, sprayed with Chaos Black, um, and then I followed that up with a corn red base coat. That was across everything, wasn't trying to be too neat, just covering the, the rhinos. After the corn red base coat, it was a, a dry brush with Mephiston Red, which is another base paint, so it gets a really nice coverage. It just leaves that corn red showing in the recesses slightly. After that, I moved on to starting to base coat the brass. So this worked for uh, every point on the model, so the, the, the armor of the rider and the rhino. So this was a brass scorpion as a base coat. I then followed this brass scorpion base coat with a hash nut copper highlight. I then retouched all of the black on the rider, so obviously the, some of the, the, the bronze and some of the reds seeped across because I've been not particularly clean with it, so I touched that back into black because I wanted to work with a really dark base coat there. After the highlight, the entire model gets an Agrax Earthshade wash, so that's all the bronze and all the red, just to tone everything back down. After that, I start the many, many highlights that uh, covering six rhinos takes here with Evil Sun's highlight onto all of the raised armor plate edges, and also around the symbols, so giving some definition around some of the, the bronze trim. This was then followed by a Fire Dragon Bright highlight. This is very sparing, so it actually takes significantly less time than the Evil Suns, which is covering every edge. This is really just focused on kind of corners and tips. Just, it gives that really hard sharpness. If you use too much of this in an orange, they look very orange rather than red, so you've got to be very, very gentle and sparing. With the red done, it was then time to uh, punish myself and hopefully not ruin any highlights by laying in the Lead Belcher base coat. I mean, it, you'll see it as I'm painting it, but the hardest part for these is obviously that a lot of this base coat is tucked in underneath. So I'm trying not to ruin all the effort that's gone into the red so far. With the lead belcher base coat done, I put a null oil wash across all of the metal. And it was at this point that I realized that there's some bronze gears, kind of where knee joints and ankle joints would be, and well, that I wanted to be bronze. And this only occurred to me after I started looking at them. So I went back through and painted these out with, um, Colour escapes me at this point, but a, a, a different kind of bronze, and then I hit this with a null oil wash as well. I then approached the rider's armour, and this was a, an experiment for me. I wanted kind of a blended red tinge into black. So I started by working with really watered down corn red, just working on the shield to see whether I could get it to look the way I wanted to. Um, it wasn't quite working, it, it was this nice maroony red, but it wasn't looking how I was hoping to look. I picked up a contrast uh, paint. This one was Flesh Terrors Red that I was aiming to use on, on a future project. Um, and I decided that maybe th this half wash, half paint style might work for us. So over that corn red, I applied Flesh Terrors Red to the shield. And suddenly it turned into this really deep maroon fade, which was exactly what I was looking for. So with the experiment on the shield done, I then started using that corn red edge highlight over all of the armor panels, and then followed that with the, the Flesh Terror's red contrast paint, which gives me this deep maroon armor, um, bruised black almost, is the, is the feeling I get from it. With the all the armor on the model painter, I then started adding the vetigris layer. So I, I did this similarly in the Bloodthirster. This is watered down Temple Guard blue. I water it down to the point where effectively it starts, you can almost start to see the pigment separating in the, in the, in the water and then apply it everywhere and then kind of take some of it off with the brush as well. You just want it to apply around bolts and in recesses. And as it dries, it goes very chalky and it looks great as a little 
kind of spot color blue across the model. Next up was highlighting uh, the, the silver medals, uh, predominantly around the axe blade and like the axe blade on the, on the rhino's front. This was done using Stormhost silver because I'm never going near my Runefang silver again. It's turned into some kind of gel, but the Stormhost, which is a, a newer formulation and a lot brighter, seems to be holding up nicely in uh, my relatively hot area. So it's holding, its, it's holding itself for the moment and it isn't turning into jelly. Uh, I noticed a few leather patches across the model, mainly leather stirrups. So this was a dry eyed bark base coat followed by a Gawthor brown highlight. And these were little streaky highlights rather than edge highlights, trying to give some pattern and wear into the stirrups. Moving on to the axe blade, this is very similar to, to the way I've painted uh, weapon wraps previously. Um, this is a Carrick stone base coat that then gets two washes. Agrax Earthshade both times, it gets it very dark. You then follow this with Carrick stone again as an edge highlight and then you don't have to worry about a third step at that point. The double wash changes that base tone significantly. I was never sure how to paint the mouths on the, on the juggernauts of the rhinos. I, I wanted something that tied into the model, but kind of made them obvious. And, and it ended up going back to that final edge highlight color and pulling it through as a base coat. So what I did was base coat the mouth Jacero orange. And then I gave this a uh, null and oil wash once it was dry. And that was it. There were no other highlights in this, but I get to kind of tie that orange there into the orange of the highlights on the armor panels. It was at this point that I started eyeing off the fabric drapes that hang off the waist. On some of the models, I'd also added kind of cloaks or um, pieces of fabric hanging off because I wanted to, to prevent put across a kind of bestial sense on these models. And to do this, I wanted to paint them as animal pelts. And I had no idea what was gonna look best for this. And this is where a little bit of uh, scrap cardboard came into play. So I pulled this out, threw down some black base coat kind of swatch spaces, and then going through different colors that I thought would work as kind of fantasy or real pelts, I laid them down and labeled them because I was never gonna remember what they were. Over the top of that, I started practicing different pelt patterns. Um, and you'll see some of that, of what I came up with, you know, half circles or streaks or kind of splodging with a, a particularly beat up brush that happened to have a perfect kind of half moon shape, but a, a ragged one. Um, but the thing here is that I was being inspired by real life patterns. So things like zebra stripes or uh, the patterns on, the, on a cheetah or a giraffe even, though. not that I attempted to paint a giraffe pelt. The, the, you know, the internet's going to be full of images. I happened to, you know, on a, on a trip to the zoo to film some rhinos for no reason that I can possibly think of. Uh, I, I took the opportunity to film some animal pelts as well. And I used that, that and some photos as, as some references to kind of mess with ideas. It was more to give me an idea of what something natural looked like rather than copying colors and patterns. Word perfect. So I applied those across all of the models. Um, some worked better than others, but I'm really happy with the result nonetheless. So going back to the, the, the Juggernaut's teeth, I base coated them a sharp deep bone, and then I followed that with an Agrax Earthshade wash around the gum line. So I wasn't looking to highlight the tips, I'm just looking to add shadow back in around the base. And that was it for that. Moving on to the rider's head, I wanted to, to do something a little bit different here. So the flesh tones are fa fairly simple. It was a Cadian flesh tone base coat, um, and then a Reichland flesh shade wash once I'd gotten a nice coverage with Cadian flesh tone and then highlighting in Kislev flesh, a really light tone. Um, then I turned to the horn, which is the focal point on this rider, the, the unit champion here, because you know, it's this, you know, he effectively matches his mountain. I love that idea, but I didn't want it to be a bone horn because he's on a paled flesh head. It's not going to stand out. So it was a Mechanicus standard gray base coat there. I then highlighted this horn with administratum gray, drawing it in lines towards the tip. After that, it was time to start messing around and make this look kind of wounded and sore and painful. So a Karaberg Crimson was focused around the ridge of skin around the base of the horn, makes it look really sore and painful. I also used this in a way that I hadn't before. I uh, drew it out like veins off the top of the horn and this worked great because it was partly translucent because it's a wash paint. Um, so it left some of that skin tone showing through. And then did the same with 
uh, Drakenhof Nightshade. Doing this means that, that I get this kind of vein pattern that looks like this horn's erupted and, and painful and fed by, you know, all, all of the veins in his head. I don't know what that's doing to his brain, but I mean, it's corn. You really obsessed with skulls and blood at this point anyway. Moved on to the skulls and the bone on the model. Uh, for the most part, this is using my cheats method, which is a base coat of a brown or a skull color. So Zandri dust, Shabdi bone, screaming skull, any of those will work or Carrick stone for that matter. And then washing it with a particular brown. So Seraphim sepia, Agarac the earth shade or Reichlin flesh shade. You get different tones and you don't need to worry about highlighting. I did highlight the jaw bone that's on his shield and that was done using a Shabdi bone over an Agarac the earth shade wash. Next, I targeted the eyes on the rhino and the tassel on his shield. This was base coated Sibrite green. This was followed by a Biltan green wash. And then I highlighted both of these spots using Temple Guard blue. So a tie into the, the verdigris armor, but also it kind of gives me a, a, a different contrast color that isn't just red and green. So they're not Christmas, right? You get the blue across and it's a nice spot, which I'm aiming for across the entire army. The base coated the base mechanic is standard grey, the rocks gave him blight dinge, much like the bloodthirster, gave it a null more wash, dry brushed the stones, carrack stone, and the ground door took. Painted the base room black and applied some static grass and thought I was done. But I wasn't. I kept looking at it and I felt like there was something missing. And I realised there's these big flat open plates, particularly on the haunches and around the tops of the the front legs are on the head and I thought that I'd try my hand at some war paint. So I pulled out Pallid Witch Flesh, started laying in some triangular patterns. I was going for angular shapes because I thought that curves didn't fit the model. So I ended up with things that kind of echoed the corn symbol or just straight triangles or in some cases um, spirals and things like that. In particular there's one I'm really proud of that is a spiral on the rhino's haunch that also matches a tattoo on the back of the rider's head. Um, but I wasn't happy with the Pallid Witch Flesh. It was way too bright. So I went back through, but I was happy with the shape. So I went back through and I re-painted all of them uh, in Ushabdi Bone. And then I carried this Ushabdi Bone across into the, the other five after my first experiment. Uh, this was a much better kind of paler, more ochre or you know, stone-based pigment, which I thought would work really nicely. But they were too clean. Uh, and this is where I attacked a piece of sponge. So this is a, a, a I don't know, half inch by half inch piece of foam that comes out of a, 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 a pelican case packing foam, which which we have for, for some camera gear around here. Um, but you can also get in some figure cases. For It's basically pick and pluck foam. So I cut this uh, and shaped it to be a small kind of square on the top, dabbed this into some uh, corn red paint, dabbed most of it off on my palette and then used it to sponge battle damage around these, um, around the war paint. This gives it a chipped and flaked look, looks perfect. Using the corn red because it's the undertone and it's the darker corn red where it looks brighter matches the highlights and where it looks darker matches the undertone. Golden, looking great. And I thought I was done, again. And I kept looking and I realized that these scuffed beat up war paint, didn't match the riders with these really clean highlights. So I decided to add some chipping battle damage. And this is an awful thing to be doing after you've done all of your highlights. So if you've gotten this far, before you start painting that orange highlight, go back to your Evil Sun's highlight and make it rough. So around those hard edges, you know, bring it up a little bit, little splotches and things like that. And, you know, do some streaks in flat planes and stuff in that Evil Sun's. And then before you move, to the, the Fire Dragon Bright highlight. Take some black or a very dark brown. In this case, I was using, um, I think it's Dryad Bark again, quite a dark brown, mixed with a little black. And fill in some of those gaps. So you wanna leave the red showing around the, the edge with a little brown, and that gives you that chip. In some of the bigger spots, you can even add a little bit of lead belcher brown if you want. There's your battle damage. Then go through with your Fire Dragon Bright and highlight, but avoid these damaged spots. And there we go, they're looking battered, they're looking bruised, they're war painted. These are, you know, I'm really happy with these now. I get to practice some freehand and some battle damage. 
less is more with battle damage, but by the same token, if you've got big flat spaces, you can get away with it. And that was it. After the chipping, after the battle damage, they were definitely done. Move on. Let's get to some glamour shots. Okay, no, look, I'm not quite done yet. And I realized this just as I put them down to start, to start shooting some glamour shots. I hadn't put any blood on them, so I hit the axe blades for the riders with blood for the blood god, and then they were ready for some shots. So here you are. I hope you really enjoyed these, these glamour shots of the painted rhinos. I know I'm really happy with them. And that's it. You followed along through the building and that light converting and you've gotten here to this finished product and I hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope you enjoyed the models. Are you painting these? Are you doing some cool conversion with them? That would be, you know, pretty cool. I know someone mentioned in the, the comments for the last video that they're doing a, a World Leaders Army and, and converting them and I, I'm honestly super keen to see what they look like. So, you know, feel free to, to send me an email or, or tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see how they look as they turn out. Obviously, I'll put links to Instagram and Facebook in the video description. Um, why don't you subscribe and follow along? I put things up as I'm working on them, certainly faster than I'm working on video. So, you know, there's, there's a little bit more from me there in terms of photos, and I hope you'll follow along there. If you like this video, make sure you hit like, subscribe so you can follow along and see everything when it goes up. Uh, I'm hopefully going to pick up my, my editing schedule, but we'll see what happens. That's it for this time. So thanks, and I'll catch you next time on Landroom Hobbies.